Is the Mavic 4 Pro gonna be worth your money or is it yet another cash grab? Plus, drone saving heroes, Skydio has entered the fashion industry apparently, and more. Welcome back to Weekly Drone News, your weekly dose of drone news here with me, Ian, at Coastal Drone Co. Unfortunately, yes, we're still talking about the Mavic 4 Pro. Trust me, I'm as tired of this drone as you are, but the leaks just won't stop. So let's dive in and let's get this over with because as far as we can tell, it's coming sooner than you thought. Starting off with something that I didn't have on my drone news bingo card for this year. Skydio recently handed out Nike socks printed with the less than subtle message of don't f with Skydio. Classy move, guys. Was this a response to China's recent battery supply sabotage or was Skydio flexing just a little too hard? Either way, it definitely stands out from your typical boring corporate pens and water bottles. A bit spicy swag. This seems to me like Skydio's communication team has pretty much completely jumped the shark at this point and or Icarus has left the atmosphere. Let me know your thoughts below. I'm not super keen on this one, but let's try and keep it civil. It is just socks after all. We touched on this last week, but remember the DJI RC puck that we all thought was probably going to be vaporware? Well, it turns out it's not dead. It's actually going to be dropping soon alongside the Mavic 4 Pro. According to drone industry buddy Jasper, does this guy ever sleep? Ellens, the RC puck will support drones with OcuSync 4.0, which includes the Air 3S and the Mini 4 Pro. It promises a compact waterproof controller with an IPX7 rating with two hours of battery life, allowing flight control up to 100 meters away. Initially, we thought this was just yet another DJI gimmick, but now we're cautiously optimistic that we'll actually see this. Let's see if this puck actually scores or if it just slides off the ice. That's for you, Finn. Speaking of the Mavic, in some sad news, we've decided that we're just no longer gonna talk about it on this channel anymore. I'm just kidding. We've got some major details about the Mavic 4 Pro, including the release date, specs, and the pricing that's guaranteed to probably make your wallet cry especially in this economy. Key highlights include a shiny new 6K camera with a bigger sensor, and does this mean it'll be an APS-C size like the Zenmuse X7 maybe was on the Inspire 2? Of course, bigger sensor better regardless, meaning more low light gathering pixels and capabilities and less noise in the video. It's got a fancy new 360 degree gimbal with a built-in electronic ND filter system. Normally, this is only found in cinema grade cameras, but hey, why not throw it onto a drone? Seriously, an electronic ND filter is huge you'll no longer have to land and swap filters. And assuming there's still aperture control, this means that you can get some silky motion blur in your cinematic footage, even in the most brightest of shooting conditions. Me personally right now, I'm gonna bet that the ND feature will only be on the main wide camera, meaning that the tele and medium lenses will probably suffer some feature limitations. I think the ND filter is gonna be one of the most hyped features for this because pro drone photographers and videographers will have a strong reason to consider upgrading to have this flexibility. Reportedly, the drone boasts 52 minutes of battery flight time and charges up to three batteries in just 90 minutes using the new dual mode 240 watt charger. The leaks also suggest that DJI is going to introduce an RC Pro 2 controller with a seven inch tilting touchscreen because apparently a regular screen wasn't bougie enough. This will probably be a hybrid of the big RC Plus and the RC Pro that we already have with the screen floating over top of the controls like the older Phantom 4 Pro V2 with that smart controller that came with it back in the before times. Now, before we talk about pricing, I want to talk about the utility of this drone and what I potentially see some considerations for it. A few months ago, I wrote a video talking about the Air 3S and why I really struggle to recommend you upgrade to it if you were already an Air 3 owner and why I just wasn't that excited about adding it to our fleet of drones that we've got behind us here. I haven't of course made a decision about the Mavic 4 Pro yet and I won't until at least the announcement day. As we don't get review units and we have no inside track with DJI on this stuff, we're here to serve the people and not be burdened with an NDA when we have an opinion about something that, that isn't exactly sponsor friendly. So here's the reality. This drone is a replacement for a platform that was launched in 2021 four years ago. The Mavic 3 Pro is an iterative upgrade and probably should have just been called like the Mavic 3S. The Mavic 4 series will be a launch of a new ecosystem that we've already sort of seen with their launch of the Matrice 4 recently. The question will be though, are the batteries gonna be the same across the board like they were with the Mavic 3 and the Enterprise series? The moment of truth, what you've been waiting for and I've been dragging this out, pricing. And again, thanks to Jasper's tireless efforts on X, and you can read more about this stuff in his articles on Drone Excel. so please go send some traffic his way over there. At this point, as far as we understand it, the base model with the current 
standard DJI RC2 that you can get with the Mini 4 Pro controller, and probably one battery is gonna be 2250 US. The Flymore combo, which probably comes with the RC2 smart controller, three batteries, and the dual charger, $3,200 US. And the do you really need this creator combo, which sounds like it will have 512 gigs of onboard storage, which is actually less than the three pro Cine's one terabyte, and this new RC Pro 2 controller that's rumored, $4,440. There's no mention yet if there's a Cine version planned, which should probably be the most expensive version you could probably buy. It'll have most likely onboard storage like one terabyte and a ProRes recording capability internally, which of course bumps the bitrate by like 10 times. And if the creator combo doesn't include ProRes and Apple and DJI still friends on, then expect the Cine version to be an order of magnitude more costly than the creator combo. Like $6,000 maybe or $59.99. But before you go, there's more. There's new images leaked that show a redesigned camera setup. The main 24 mil camera now sits on top with the two others below it featuring a two and a half times optical zoom. Jasper also revealed there's an insane 24 times zoom capability, perfect for those that want to creep from afar. And, and yeah, it's going to be probably a hybrid mode that includes lens switching and some digital enhancement beyond the limits of the telephoto lenses. User interface wise, nothing groundbreaking has been revealed. It's probably going to be DJI using the tried and true layout since they're running the drone on what's most likely the updated version of DJI Fly. On Drone Excel, Jasper Ellens confirmed it'll officially launch on Thursday, April 24th, with a teaser coming out on the 17th. So mark your calendars, or don't, I'm, I'm not your boss. So today's episode, of course, is sponsored by us, Coastal Drone Co. Are you tired of wondering if you'll pass your drone exams? Well, don't sweat it. We've trained nearly 20,000 drone pilots just like you. We're offering online or in-person training for your basic or advanced, or even your FAA Part 107 drone pilot certificate. Ready to step up your drone game and land that drone job? Well, check out the links below or just visit us at coastaldrone.co and we'll help you get flying fast. In slightly heavier than 25 kilogram or 55 pound drone news, Skyrise, a company is working to convert a Robinson helicopter to a new control system that looks suspiciously like a gaming console and less like a traditional helicopter cycling. They released a video recently demonstrating their prototype Robinson R66 helicopter fully kitted with this new digital flight control system. Why are we talking about this? Well, because I control the script and I like helicopters, that's why. This is a big step towards a new way of flying helicopters which has been relatively unchanged in the small single engine market for basically since the 1930s, when Sikorsky took to the sky in what was basically a flying ladder. The goal of the Skyrise operating system, which does the actual flying of the helicopter, is to take away the hands and feet basic flying skills from a would-be pilot and make them only have to worry about navigation instead of keeping the helicopter stable in a hover. This software even has the ability to auto-rotate or glide to the ground safely when the engine fails without input from the pilot. Basically, the software is gonna turn the helicopter into the same kind of flying experience or as simple as flying a Mavic or an Inspire. But here's a super cool thing. The video that we're talking about, the demo was actually done remotely. The helicopter pilot that was operating the, the helicopter, or I wanted to say drone almost, was 60 miles away in a control chair that was virtually linked to the helicopter on the flight line. If you wanna check your notes, that was a beyond visual line of sight flight. And there was a passenger and of course a safety pilot, but there was someone on that helicopter that was being flown basically over FaceTime. So yeah, check out the video for yourself. It's worth a watch. And it's just one step closer to my childhood fantasy of finally owning a Mahler sky car before 1999. Oh wait. Last Friday night, no, not the Katy Perry song, a drone helped save a missing 59 year old woman in Wisconsin Rapids. Police launched a frantic search as a storm approached. Thankfully, within minutes of deploying a drone, rescuers were able to locate her. She'd already been outdoors for three hours and couldn't stand on her own at the time, but thanks to drones, she's now recovering in hospital. Good job, drones. Another win for drone technology. Maybe drones aren't evil robots after all, unless we want them to be, maybe? Also, 
In Massachusetts, drone delivery tests are kicking off, aiming to cut traffic by removing delivery trucks from the road. Indiana-based Arrive AI and Massachusetts Department of Transportation successfully delivered medical supplies by drone in Lynn, Massachusetts. Did you know that every 1% of drone deliveries removes roughly 3,000 trucks off the roads? And apparently drones are ideal for delivering items under 10 pounds. Sorry, no drone delivered big screen TVs to your next binge watch session, of course. Secure high-tech delivery drone boxes may soon become a subscription model, potentially even free with increased adoption. Drones, they're solving traffic problems and porch pirates one package at a time. If this piques your interest, of course, you can check out our full drone delivery podcast episode. So that wraps up this week's drone news. Join us Sunday for our podcast where we break down airspace categories in the USA and Canada that you absolutely need to know as a drone pilot. Be sure to tune in and see if Finn can keep me on topic or if I go off on a space tangent. Smash that like and subscribe button and we'll see you next week. Bye.